Bella Gandhi, welcome to The Naked Connection. I'm so excited to have you here and to share all of the dating advice for us today. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm honored. Yeah, yeah. And um, I've been following your dating advice for a while, so it's going to be really fun to get even more support for everyone here today. I would love to actually just start off by talking about dating in general, because it feels like if we aren't careful, dating can become basically a hobby. And I know you're all about dating smart. So what are the best ways to date wisely? Number one, I think you have to have an intention, right? Anything big you want to do in your life has to begin with an intention, a goal, and then steps to get towards your goal. So you might be in the category that, you know, Ashley just described. Maybe you're just dating to date, to practice, you know, to have some fun. That's great. But if you are dating with an end game in mind, then that is really what you want to think about. Who do I, it's not just who do I want to be with, who would be a good partner for me? Because so often we spin our wheels year over year, decade over decade, looking for somebody who's good on paper that looks exactly like me, right? It's like the the carbon copy of me. And the question is, if that's not working for you, it's time to ask yourself, hmm, is there something I could be tweaking to actually find what I call the lid to my pot, right? Because I like that analogy because a pot is complete on its own and a lid that fits perfectly just makes the pot a little better, but the pot functions on its own. So really, are you in a good place to date? Are you as healthy as you could be. We're all works in progress. We're never like, I'm ready, but have you worked on your own dating patterns? Do you have attachment stuff that you need to work through, right? Do you look at what's been happening in my dating life? Am I breaking up with everybody? Am I always being broken up with? Like what's really going on and doing some pattern analysis. And I mean, that's really the first step after you're like, yeah, if I want the lid to my pot and I'm not finding that, and if dating apps seem like I'm playing a video game, something something <laughs> probably deeper is going on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, I like that analogy of, yeah, I find that sometimes we're looking for the pot to our pot and like you don't put those two together. So if someone is in that place and they're like constantly finding themselves looking for the carbon copy of them, just like perhaps in the opposite sex, what would you recommend to start finding ways to look for differences that they're right. actually love, attracted to. Love is always going to come to you in an unexpected package. Mm -hmm. Sit with that for a second. We all think we know exactly who this person should be, right? And either we do two things. We kind of want a carbon copy of ourselves with like our weaknesses bolstered, right? And that's so <laughs> much of what, you know, people ultimately want. But Again, the question is, if that hasn't been working for you, what is actually going on and doing some deeper work around that? And that might require, and it probably will, you know, go beyond the scope of talking to your friends about it or talking to your parents about it. It's really enlisting the help of a professional that's not only going to help you see what your patterns are, right? And therapists can do a good job of that, but then having somebody that's going to put guardrails around you to help to make sure sure that you don't do the same thing all over again, because as humans, as smart as we fancy ourselves to be, we're also creatures of comfort and we do what's comfortable versus what's implicitly correct for us. Mm, okay. And so these guardrails, how do we figure out, I mean, obviously kind of having someone on the outside that can look in and tell us like guidance on that, but how can you start creating guide rails for yourself? I think it's holding the mirror up to yourself first and foremost. What have I been doing well? What hasn't been working out for me? And a lot of the times, it frankly, it involves enlisting outside help. The first thing you can do for yourself is get someone 
who's expert to help you. We have life coaches and business coaches and personal trainers. And in the dating world, we don't think we should need that because society rom-coms and movies <laughs> have basically told us that it's really up to us to do this. And so we're left kind of ungrounded and unmoored in this. And I think if the first step you can take is saying, if I need help, it's okay. And there is help out there. So that's the first thing you can do to put guardrails around yourself after saying, yeah, I think I have some dating patterns going on. You know, I did a session with somebody this morning who's 34 years old and has had a pattern since she was in college of dating people that weren't good for her, that would throw down red flags, but she would get into these relationships too quickly and got too invested and saw the red flags after, but really in retrospect said they were always there. But then it's like, well, last time I dated someone who I met on a dating app and he ended up living in Australia and I live in New York. So this time I'm going to set my, I'm going to set my radius for 10 miles outside of New York city. I'm like, but that's a, pro that's not the root problem here. The mm. root problem wasn't the fact that this person, I mean, dating someone over an ocean or two, is clearly probably <laughs> not the best thing to do in general, just because dating is hard enough and why put some oceans in between, but there's usually something more, there's something more common that you're doing. And for her, it was choosing people that were red flaggy and weren't really in it for a committed relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I can find that it's like really hard to adjust what you're attracted to. Cause I think sometimes people are like, oh, I'm aware that this is my pattern or that, I don't know, like I'm always going for the crazy girls or I'm always like being attracted to people who don't have time for me, whatever it is. But like, it's really hard to actually crave the opposite. So if someone's in a place like that, where maybe they're aware of what their pattern is, but they're like, I just can't bring myself to desire the opposite of that or just something else. What do you do? Yes, you can. You can choose <laughs> who you're attracted to. Okay. Mm. If you're choosing crazy or hot and crazy, right there, you have a dating pattern built into you, which is a disorganized attachment system potentially, right? Mm -hmm. You are maybe old enough and smart enough to be listening to this podcast, which means you're conscious that something is going on. You want a real connection. But mm -hmm. if you're constantly gravitating and magnetize towards women or men that have a lot of crazy, most likely something in your background had some dysfunction in it. And again, dysfunction feels normal versus what's right. So you might go, yeah, God, I only attract crazy people. No, you're accepting only crazy people. So the first step is self-awareness and responsibility. Yeah. I love, I love the way you frame that of like, are you attracting it or are you accepting it? Cause you're I'm sure it, yeah, crazy is everywhere or whatever it is, like is everywhere and you just choose whether you accept it or not. Okay, this is helpful. So one thing that I wanted to dive into you about is just online dating because that has become like when people talk about dating, it's almost like kind of assumed people instead of being like, where'd you guys meet? They're like, what app did you meet on? You know, so what is your take on using dating apps successfully? It comes from a mindset, right? And if you don't know what you're doing in dating, you're certainly not going to know what you're doing on a dating app, right? And then it feels frustrating and confusing and unfulfilling, right? So think about a dating app as a tool that can help you when you know how to date the right way. So of our clients that find love, you know, 95% of them find them on dating apps. Or is it easy? No, but consider a dating app your friend in showing you candidates that you would never come across in your real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Like in, in my personal history, I've, I've dated guys that I probably would have, if I met them in real life, I probably wouldn't have dated them, but I, but for whatever reason, meeting them on the app, I connected with them in a different way that I think wouldn't have happened in the organic world. So I kind of see it in a beautiful, positive way. And I know but it's a little more challenging sometimes for, for that to happen. Um, 
thinking about specifically men, I've been reading some stats and just learning about the difference of what, how men experience dating apps versus women. I think it's something like 10% of men get like 90% of the women's attention on dating apps, which creates like this struggle for, I guess, everybody kind of in general, but how would you suggest someone that maybe like, you know, isn't in that top 10% to find success? on a dating app mm-hmm. what you and believe me we work with a lot of guys right mm-hmm. and the dating apps skew towards and don't shoot the messenger most women start their <laughs> height search at five foot ten why there's no reason for that because they can't and mm-hmm. what that does is it leaves a lot of guys that are you know four foot ten to five foot nine struggling with the medium. So, but what I tell guys all the time, and we work with a lot of them is you got to look like you're on your A game. You got to look like you're the man with the plan and you're going to work harder, which none of them have a problem with, but it's really about getting your marketing correct. I look at dating apps all day long and dating sites as do the coaches that work for me. And the majority of people have terrible photos, right? Mm -hmm. When all the data shows that we don't pick good photos of ourselves. Have someone professional help you with that. Let them tell you what to wear. Take the coaching. Don't think, oh, I'm going to look like I'm trying too hard. No, you're not. Women are wired in a certain way and they want certain things out of guys. And I know what that is. And so ultimately it's looking a certain way will get you more traction and more success than you've seen in the past. I, I'm like laughing to myself about this because I have done this with friends where we'll show each other our dating apps, like of the opposite sex. And they give such different feedback where a girl's going to say something so different than a guy would about a profile or vice versa. So I love that you're recommending that. And I, I think it's so true. A lot of like my friends, they'll be like, Oh, these, these guys photos are horrible but like, maybe they're cute, maybe they're attractive. And so it's hard to, to piecemeal together and to feel like the desire to spend time with that person or to like set time aside to, to connect with them. Yeah. You were not going to do as well as you could if you took the dating apps more seriously, make an investment mm-hmm. in yourself because you're worth it. Yeah. Right. And if you're just got schlumpy, dumpy photos and you're blurring out people's faces and they're dark and you have shadows on your face and, you know, you you it's just not going to work. It's not going to work as well as it could. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it just kind of goes back to what you're saying right away of like getting intentional of like, what are you there for? If you are there just to have fun and hang out and then sure, don't worry about your picture so much, perhaps. But if you're intentional about it spending some time to make it look really clean and clear of what you are desiring is super important. Yeah. 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 Um, so I have heard from just like a handful of men that I've spoken with about this struggle between, let's say that they, they're really clear and they know that, Hey, I'm not at a moment in my life where I'm ready for committed partnership, but I also don't want to, you know, just be totally celibate or like not enjoy dating and connecting with new people, but then they kind of find themselves in this predicament of how can I date and be respectful and kind and open and treat women really well, and also not be ready for something more. How would you recommend they navigate that? So let me make sure I understand your question. Are you saying they're internally not ready to date? Like not like looking for life partner long-term commitment. And how do they get on, on the dating apps? Then I think the first thing you can do is if you don't know what you're looking for, say, I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm just Mm -hmm. looking to date, or I'm looking for something short term. Don't say you're looking for a serious long-term monogamous relationship. If you're not right, that's the Mm -hmm. first way you think you're going to get more play or more action that way. The, The worst thing you can do on a dating app is be dishonest in any way, shape or form. Yes. Yeah. I I appreciate you saying that because even thinking like, I know the height thing is so silly, but unfortunately that's like a reality. And 
a, I find people will like lie about their height even. And it's like, you're going to meet eventually and we're all going to know how tall you are. So just like be honest. And, and I find that like when people are really straightforward, like I don't want kids or I am looking for a short, like it's you were, I find I respect them a lot more for being really clear. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And you know, don't lie about anything, right? Have full body shots out there that make you look just like you do in real life. With my clients, we do photo shoots in Chicago for everybody that works with us around the nation. And so my goal is always for a date to say to you, wow, you look just as good as your photos or even better in person. Not like, God, you look so much better in person than your photos. Then you're underselling yourself. You know, mm -hmm. and I've had people say, well, I'd rather surprise them. I'm like, you're not casting your net out as wide if you don't look as good in your photos. Mm -hmm. So people have all these twisted ways of looking at this. I'm like, if you were selling your house, would you take a bunch of janky cell phone <laughs> photos with clutter all over the place? Like, that's what my house looks like normally. No, like having a party, you would clean things up, right? Because you respect the people that are coming into your house. And dating is very much similar. Nobody looks amazing all the time. Nobody's house is clean all the time, but you can look that way. So show people what you look like, mm -hmm. right? When you're looking really good. And then on dates, guess what? Show up that way. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love this analogy of the house. And I find it's, I don't know what is in the psychology of our brains, but it's like we take dating and love and relationships and we don't apply the rest of the world's principles to it. Like you're describing like you would, yeah, you're going to clean up your house if you're going to take photos and try to sell it. So like, why wouldn't we do the same? And so sometimes I wonder what leads us to view dating and relationships differently. Right. I mean, sometimes it's a question of authenticity, right? Like, well, I don't always dress up, so I don't want them to think I always do. I'm like, everyone gets that. Like yeah. no one expects that you go to bed in a red dress. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or in a three piece suit, right. But showing what you look like at your best also shows that you can look really good. And most likely the kinds of women you want to attract or the kinds of men you want to attract are people that you could take to a fancy work party, but they could also go to a baseball game with you. Right. But you want to know that this person is capable of doing that. And if all you have are couch surfing, schlumpy, dumpy travel photos in there, it's hard for me to imagine bringing you to an event that's fancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're not brushing our teeth in our ball gowns and suits. So yeah. Um, okay. I love this. So cleaning up our photos, making sure that we're being really honest of what we're looking for. Um, I know honest, a lot of positive. Honest, but positive. I want to skew towards that because sometimes when we're honest, we skew towards the negative. And this is such a big mistake. And I hope, take notes on this. Do not talk about what you're not looking for. Don't say, please do not contact me if you're unemployed, underemployed, you live with your mom. Like, don't put any of that in there. You want to be honest and you also want to be positive in your profile. Mm. Yes. It's, this is so funny. Cause I just recently started dating again after being in a long-term relationship and getting on the apps and seeing people that have these really negative, like, Oh, don't leave a comment if you're this, that, or the other. And I'm like, it doesn't even matter if I'm aligned with it or not. I'm instantly turned off by the negative energy that's coming through that response. Yeah. yeah. And I know that they're probably just trying to be straightforward, but it doesn't feel that way on the other end of it. No. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's say that someone, they've done everything you've said. They have created an amazing profile and they're going on dates. What are some of the red flags to start looking out for? Cause I know you have so much insight on red flags in general. One of the biggest things, and this is an easy one to look for in profiles, is to say, I'm not looking for any drama. Mm -hmm. That's a red flag, right? Because most likely people that say, I'm not looking for drama are the ones that are going to cause you drama. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so easy, true. Easy red flag to spot right away. Um, anybody that's negative, that's talking about what they don't want in their profile, they sound like they're not really committed to this process, right? You don't like the tone of what they're saying. Those are all red flags. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody isn't messaging you in a way that's compelling on the apps, if they're just answering your questions, but not bouncing the ball back to you, always end your messages with the question. It's like having a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't say, if somebody's like, how are you, Kirsten? You wouldn't say, fine. What is that? Right. I have nothing to respond (laughs) to. Right. So ending your, ending your messages and asking questions That's a green flag as well. Don't ask and don't send messages that are like 17 paragraphs long. Like think about how you would have a conversation with somebody and mimic that in your messages. Yeah. Yeah. We get online and the general rules of communication just seem to get really confused. (laughs) So just imagining like we're communicating in real life. Um, Okay. And then like red flags in dating, like let's say that they meet someone they're really into that person. And now they're like out in the flesh, in the real world, experiencing one another. What are, what should we be looking out for? People that are inconsistent, unreliable, flaky, they play the victim, right? And a lot of times red flaggy people will tell you right up front. Yeah. You know what? I cheated on my last boyfriend. Because blah, blah, blah. Wait, wait, what? Right. You're playing the victim. You were the cheater. So when you start listening for red flags, you'll start to see them. I don't want anybody to skew towards only looking at the negative and looking for red flags, but these aren't things to brush underneath the rug. If someone doesn't seem that interested in you or as interested as you are in them, you don't want to feel like you're doing the chasing. If they show you that they're not that into you, let it fizzle out. Find someone who's just as interested in you as you are in them. Someone that likes you isn't going to keep you guessing. Yes. Yeah. I. It's so funny because in talking with friends that are dating, they're like, I don't know if he likes me. I don't know if she likes me. Like, And in my mind, I think to myself, well, if you're questioning it, then that's your answer. They're not going to leave you guessing, right? Yeah. When, yeah. Right. I've been married for a long time. It's like, you know, when that person is into you, you're not like, you know, you might need to navigate having the conversation around exclusivity, like, okay, let's shut off the apps, but you know that this is going in a positive way. And, and I'm going to segue because my brain works like this into another (laughs) flag related to that is anybody who wants to go too fast and furious. If you don't want to date, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, right? And it just seems like that's a lot for you. And the person is pushing you to do that. That's a red flag, right? If they're, if you had a great date with somebody last night and you say, Hey, do you want to go out tomorrow again? And they're like, you know what? I would love to, but I've got plans. How about next week? That's a good Mm -hmm. cadence. You don't want to go on five dates in five days. We just start missing red flags. We rush into things so quickly in our culture. We have some sort of a three date, you know, fantasy that in three dates, we should know we're going to sleep with this person. I'm like, if you go on three dates with somebody and the average of the date is two to three hours, you've spent six to nine hours with this person. It's basically Monday at work. And you're thinking about becoming exclusive with them after Monday. You know, people like the logic and the numbers that I put to this because otherwise we're doing things completely irrationally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so appreciate you putting it in that perspective of like one work day isn't. It's enough. Monday. Yeah. It's Monday. <laughs> it's freaking Monday. <laughs> three dates is Monday at work. Not mm-hmm. even a 24 hour Monday. It's Monday at work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't really know anyone fully, you know, you go to work your first day on the job. You don't know what's happening. You don't know what's going on in the company. No. Yeah. And we're looking to sleep with someone on Monday, mm-hmm. three dates. We're looking to hang out in that person's space, pull ourselves off the dating app. Mm-hmm. 
doesn't sound that normal now that I put it into that perspective, does it? Mm -mm. Right? Yeah. Oh, totally. Well, yeah. And and that's the question I have about in terms of pacing, like what do you, I know everyone navigates things differently. There's no like black or white, but when you're intentional about being with someone, what is kind of like a pacing that you recommend or like would think is healthy? Um, I like 15 dates over three months with one person before we become exclusive. And so uh, over three months, we're not having sex before that. We're old school, right? And old school meaning looking at data that actually shows here's how healthy relationships start to develop. You want strong physical chemistry? Guess what? Have a really strong emotional connection with someone. You'll never have better sex. Mm. Amen Longer to chemistry. that. No. <laughs> right. And yeah. and when you think about it, right? You're you're looking for somebody and I'm guessing and I'm talking as if you're looking for a long-term relationship, right? You know, over the course of your life, you know, you're looking to spend like 3,000 Mondays with this person. Mm-hmm. A long time. Right. Mondays. Yeah. A lot of Mondays, a lot of Mondays. If you're looking to be in a monogamous relationship, maybe it ends in marriage. Maybe you want kids, maybe you don't, but that's how you should think about this is Mm. we're so instant gratification focused. We're not even going, gosh, does this person seem like they would be a good friend to me? Mm. Are they good friends to other people in their lives? Are they consistent? Are they reliable? Could they be a cheerleader for me? Mm -hmm. We're not wired for this stuff. Right. And so we don't know how to do it. Nobody's teaching us how to do it. And that's what we do every day at Smart Dating Academy is say there is a right way to do this. Well, I started the company 14 years ago. We've had zero divorces since 2009. Oh my gosh. I know. Considering that divorce rates are like 50%, that's insane. It's insane. And it's amazing. My friends that are divorce attorneys that refer divorced people to us, they're like, you should take out, you know, highway banners in every city in the country. I'm like, there is a right way to do this. We're just not looking at the data and nobody's put together a system until now. Mm -hmm. And there is a right way to do it. And the relationships are easy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we fall under this trap of looking at things in like a really, I know like a lot of women look at it in like a fairy tale way. And that can be problematic when we're interacting in the world and especially for men to like receive that. And there is such like, if you look at it in terms of like, not like a business, but maybe in some ways a little bit, like you're intaking information, you're exploring from a little bit more of a logical standpoint, then you can make better decisions is what it sounds like. Um, Totally. I love to hear, I know you work with men quite, quite a, quite a bit. And I'm curious what kind of shifts you've seen your male clients make that have been the most effective that you think like any guy should do. Oh my gosh. Guys do so well at this process. Not that women don't, but a lot of guys have grown up playing sports, right? And they're used to having a coach and they take direction really well from their coaches, right? And they're like, coach, you tell me what to do. So if I'm looking, you know, I'm just going to make up an example. If I tell a guy, I want you to message five to 10 women a day, they'll come back. They're like, oh my God, I did 20, right? Like I'm going to (laughs) overachieve. And they take the coaching really well. I think men love the direct advice. My team is all women. And so we will tell you, this is your best look. Go buy this, look like this, do this, say this. And they're like, oh, like, oh my God, you guys are cracking the code for me. And so we know what women are looking for. And so we help you and we're not coaches at 35,000 feet. We're in inboxes with you going, okay, that message was too long. That's going to make you sound kind of stalkerish. Let's cut that down, (laughs) say this and instead, and ask her this question, right? Mm -hmm. And then we tell, take it to the video have a video chat with somebody, protect your time. I don't want you running out to meet somebody for drinks or dinner right away because check this person's vibe, right? Don't tell me I'm on Zoom all day for work. Give me a break. I'm just gonna say 15 to 20 minutes on a FaceTime or a Zoom will save you potentially three hours of a painful date. This is so funny that you're saying this because I literally 
had a zoom call with someone last night for like 30 minutes. And I'm so glad that we did that. Cause I'm like, Oh, now I can kind of read your energy better as opposed yeah. to just like some messages. Um, okay. So you said game changing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And Okay. So you said something about how, like knowing what women want, what would you say are the things that I know you mentioned like the style and the look and like the types of messages, but like, what are things that you find that perhaps like might seem obvious to us as two women, but like, aren't that like men would really benefit from being aware of? Um, message women that seem interested in you too. You don't have to chase, right? If a woman is not interested in you, don't message her five times, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes guys are like, okay, I've got to be aggressive and I've got to be a man and I've got to do this. It's like, if you're not hearing from her three, four, five times, let it go. Move on to someone that is interested in you, that shows you that interest back. Someone who's nice to you and receptive to you. That's what you want. You don't want the person you have to chase and convince you. And if someone says, you know, my goal at Smart Dating Academy is I want you to be with someone who likes you just a little bit more than you like them. And mm -hmm. you can be, you know, they're 51 and you're 49. But really thinking about these things is so useful in the dating process for men and women. You yeah. want someone that adores you, someone that's proud to be with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really great advice. Um, yeah. And if you're messaging someone five times and they're not responding, like that's not someone that you want to spend your time with. That would probably become exhausting. Yes. Would Why would you want to yeah. do that? Right. Why would you, mm -hmm. if I'm telling you, you want to be with somebody that likes you a little bit more, isn't it easy to go? Wow. If that person hasn't responded to my last three texts, they fail the equation. Mm -hmm. They don't like me a little bit more. So bless and release them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That phrase like rejection is redirection, like just shifting your focus. Yeah. Move yeah. on. And, and have so a dating funnel. Have multiple people in your dating funnel. Don't lock it down. Don't, don't create a fantasy around five pictures and 200 characters and say, oh my God, I only want to date this person. No, you don't. Crazy can't keep crazy in the closet for more than 15 minutes. You got to vet this stuff, right? You want <laughs> to have a funnel of people because someone on date two can present very differently than date 12. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I love, love the funnel. Got to have the funnel in action. Got to have a funnel. You got to have a bench gentlemen. <laughs> oh, amazing. So I know you speak a lot about the mindset to take in dating and I'm curious like what, what that looks like and sounds like for you when it comes to being successful. You know, first of all, I think come into this with the learner's mindset, right? That there are things I can grow, change and tweak. And I want to do those because this is a process that I can learn. And then along with that, along with being coachable, have hope, be what I call psychotically optimistic right? That's like hope on steroids. Tell yourself, love is out there for me. It's a when, it's not an if. Mm -hmm. And approach dating with that robust mindset. Because if you approach it with, a, I don't know, I don't know, maybe I've been so like rejected and I don't know, right? How, how positive are you going to be when you're on those dates, right? And we all want to be around someone that's fun and positive and healthy and likes themselves and makes us feel good about ourselves, right? And you have to ask yourself, am I that person? As part of what we do with our clients that work with us for a year, we do a 360 feedback process. So we have them survey their friends, their family, their village, and to tell us, to tell my team, why they think my client hasn't found the right partner yet. So everything we do is rooted in real data. Mm. I am such a sucker for real data and stats and all of the backend information. So that's amazing to hear. Um, well, okay. One other thing that I wanted to ask you about was ghosting because that is just so prevalent. And especially in the online space, I think, this is my personal like thought on it is like, because we don't know these people that well, there's like less of a, you don't feel as bad just leaving them hanging or something. I'm, I don't know what the science would be, but I'm just curious, like, what is your opinion on 
ghosting because I do everything in my power to never do that to someone, even if I'm not interested. I think it's so much better to just communicate that. And I don't understand why more people don't do it. I think there's a lot of people that are afraid of conflict, right? And gentlemen that are listening to this, don't be afraid of, con if you've been on three dates with somebody and you're not feeling it, there is a nice way to let that person go and tell them that. So you don't ghost them because you're afraid of her reaction. It's time to man up and be able to use your voice and say it in a nice way that leaves her in a good place. We have, you know, a formula that we call the goodbye sandwich. Like how do you write something to somebody that is clear and comes from a place of love, but lets that person off the hook, right? Yeah. And so ghosting somebody, I don't say like, let's say if you're on a site like Match, right? And somebody sends you a message and they're, you're not interested in them. That's not ghosting. That's just, okay. I want you to spend your energy on people that you're actually interested in. But if you've been on, you know, several dates with somebody and they're reaching out to you, don't just ghost them, tell them it's really simple. Be yeah. a human. Okay. Can you break down the ghost, the sandwich? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, we do it differently for every person and uh -huh. every situation, like okay. how you're going to say that, but people love that. Like I said, we're in the weeds. So we're helping people write scripts, right? Like how do you say this in a way that will land well, that doesn't burn a bridge? How do you talk to somebody about becoming exclusive, right? So we're like the people in the background, not writing the scripts, meaning we're not serenoing, annoying, but saying, here are the basic guidelines for how you want to communicate this to somebody. Mm -hmm. So follow this because again, nobody has been teaching people how to do this. And there yeah. are right ways to do this from a high EQ standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that when you communicate from that place, it makes it like you're in a better place. And I'm like in the energy piece of it. Like if you're kind and being respectful and compassionate to other people and letting them know, Hey, I'm not interested. Like that's going to come back better for you moving forward. And like that person's going to think more highly of you, even though maybe it was kind of painful to read that they're going to be glad you shared the truth. So they're not wondering over in their little world, what what's going on. What happened? Right. Yeah. Just right. Let it end it with grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I feel like I could go down so many rabbit holes with you. Is there anything that I haven't asked you when it comes to dating, especially online dating apps that you think is important to, to keep in mind? So starting after Christmas, there's something called peak dating season that starts. So online dating numbers spike 50 to 80% wow. starting kind of around Christmas. And then that goes until Valentine's day. And there's two key drivers to that. It's the holidays, which put us in the mood for finding love and mistletoe and all of those things and having somebody to bring to the company Christmas party or holiday party. And then New Year's resolutions, New Year, New Me. What am I going to do differently? Well, I'm single and I do want to find love this year. So there's a spike in dating app membership so much so that the Sunday after New Year's Day is the busiest online dating day of the year, every oh. year. Historically, I call it dating Super Bowl. I'm always in New York City on the talk shows, kind of telling people, here's what you got to do to get your profiles ready. So if you're listening to this and it's before peak dating season, you know, get some help around this, get some counsel on, are you presenting yourself in the right way? Cause you don't want to miss that giant spike of people. There's all these new fish coming to see. And isn't that a great thing? Oh my God. I love it. Yes. So we're going to be prepared for the Super Bowl of dating. I can't wait. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll be talking about it, you know, all over our own podcast, all over our Instagram. Yeah. So feel free to follow us on, you know, on at Smart Dating Academy on Instagram, on the Smart Dating Academy podcast. I've had a podcast since the first yeah. week of 2022, which was actually debuted by Michael Strahan on GMA. So, so yeah. All the dating advice is there. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I'm going to go make sure everyone goes and checks out everything that you have to share. Cause I know this was just touching the surface of 
all of the ways that you help people find love. And I really appreciate you coming on the show. It's been so, so amazing. It's been so amazing to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of The Naked Connection. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss another episode. Trust me on this, your sex life and that special someone in your life will thank you for it. And if you really love the show, please take a moment and leave a five-star review or a written review and let me know what you think. It would mean so much to me and this show. Until next time, happy connecting.